The JavaScript ecosystem is constantly evolving and honestly, it's overwhelming. I'll try to make this a lot simpler for you and give you what I think are the five most influential trends in the JavaScript ecosystem for 2023. What's up, everyone? My name is James Hewquick, and I do weekly videos about web development related topics. And I get a lot of opportunity to try out new frameworks, new technologies, new methodologies in JavaScript. And just like you, I still get overwhelmed with how quickly things are changing. So again, in this video, we're gonna walk through what I think are the five trends in JavaScript that are going to have the biggest impact in 2023. And I'll kind of give you a short list here before we dive into the details about what those are. So first of all, I think you're gonna write a lot less JavaScript. There's gonna be lots of reasons about this or why this is true uh, that we'll talk about in a second, but I think you'll write a lot more. I think there will also be less JavaScript in tools that we use, which we've already kind of seen this come to play. I think we will use more JavaScript runtimes than just Node.js. You know what I'm talking about. I think we will continue to ship less and less code, JavaScript code to the browser. And lastly, we will continue to have, although this may be a downside, to some of us, it's a bright side. We will continue to have more and more meta and rendering frameworks on top of the different libraries that we use for UIs. So let's go through and break down each one of these categories and I'll list out a bunch of different technologies that are relevant to each. And I'll give you examples of why I think these trends are super important and hopefully give you a better idea of what to expect in 2023. Real quick, before you keep watching, let me know in the comments what you think are the most important trends in JavaScript in 2023 in the comments below. Then you can compare and contrast and react after you watch the video. All right, so number one is the fact that we're gonna write less JavaScript. There's one answer to this that really makes that statement very easy, and that's the popularity of something called TypeScript. Now we're actually gonna talk more about writing less code in general, but in this case, we're talking specifically about writing more TypeScript instead of JavaScript. I remember several years ago when Angular was the first framework to have TypeScript kind of come as a first class citizen in the framework itself. It was the only one. And to add TypeScript to other projects, you had to go through different things. But these days you never see a new framework that doesn't have automatic TypeScript support out of the box. So I think TypeScript is gonna to continue to grow like easily. I think there's no doubt about that. More of us are using it every day, including myself, and I absolutely love it. Now, the next reason why I think that we're gonna write less JavaScript is because we're gonna have tools do a lot of the JavaScript writing for us. So one of them is GitHub Copilot. I did a video on GitHub Copilot a while back and I talked about how honestly, it's like way better than I ever expected, but it was too good that I couldn't use it on a regular basis because of how often I record videos, which is kind of unfortunate. So I think more and more people are using GitHub Copilot I think people love it. I think it's really kind of changing the game on how we write code. And there's also another tool that's come into play recently, which is ChatGPT from OpenAI. And I think they've got lots of different AI things. You hear stories about them writing paper for students in school. You hear about it writing code snippets for you. You hear about it writing blog posts for people. The AI stuff is, is really getting more and more serious. And I think it's not it's definitely not replacing jobs at this point, but it's definitely going to continue to gain momentum and more of us are going to take advantage of that sort of stuff so that we're not having to write all the tools ourselves. Now, the last thing I want to call out with writing less JavaScript is I think we're going to have more and more kind of SaaS platforms do more of the work for us. I am particularly a big fan of Superbase. I use this as the back end for the Learn, Build, Teach website and the Learn, Build, Teach Discord bot. I'm also a huge fan of AppRights.io for similar reasons. And these are projects and platforms that take care of code for authentication, for database, for all these different things. And they give you an SDK that you can use in JavaScript so that you don't have to write all that code yourself. Especially for smaller startups, I hear more and more of them using platforms like this every single day. So I think the growth of these platforms is going to continue to grow and have strong growth in 2023. All right, so the second trend I wanna call out is less JavaScript and the tools that we use in the JavaScript ecosystem. And this has become more and more true over and over again. So there is a simple fact with JavaScript, and this will be kind of be a theme, is that it is a slower language than other more native or lower languages like C, C++, Go, Rust, and a few others. And so because these tools in the JavaScript ecosystem kind of up until the last couple of years, a lot of them have been built in JavaScript. We've realized as an ecosystem that we can now build tools that are a lot faster to do the things that we want to do. So a couple of examples here that you probably have heard of, there's a bundler called ES build, which has gotten a lot of popularity. It is written with Golang. So the Go language, which is actually one that I would be interested in learning if other people 
have watched it or used it, let me know what you think. The other is Vite. Vite is the next generation front end tooling. It's basically your kind of build and bundler and it uses ES build under the hood. And Vite actually uses Golang as well. So this advertises being way faster than all the stuff that we had used prior to this. Then we have a JavaScript runtime. We'll talk about runtimes more in a second here. But Bun is a JavaScript runtime alternative to Node.js. Again, we'll talk about this more in a second. And this is written in Zig, which is something I've like barely ever heard of, but is a lower level language also. So these lower level languages like Go, like Zig, and in TurboPack, TurboPack is built with Rust. All these things are able to run code faster than JavaScript itself. So I think although we will have a very strong JavaScript ecosystem, JavaScript as a skill, as a language to know is still incredibly powerful and useful, the tools surrounding the JavaScript ecosystem will evolve to be written more and more in other languages. So that may be your reason to go out and start to learn a new language for your future and your career. All right, I've kind of referenced JavaScript runtimes and now's the time to talk about JavaScript runtimes and the fact that this year in 2023, we will see a strong growth in runtimes that are not Node.js. So Node.js back in 2012 or 13, whenever it was created, was a really big deal because it allowed us to not only run JavaScript in the browser, but also on the server to compete with something like Java or .NET, Ruby in the Ruby on Rails framework specifically. So Node.js gave us that ability to run JavaScript on the server. But in the last eight to 10 years, not much of that has evolved to give us more options until recently. So one of those options to start is Cloudflare Workers. Now Cloudflare created their own runtime which allows you to run JavaScript on the edge in the Cloudflare servers using the cloud, the workers runtime. So this is their own custom thing. I believe it's open source now. It runs on top of V8, but it allows it to run at the edge, which is basically distributing this code all across the world to all these different dots on here that you can see, as opposed to just running in one data center, which means now we're able to run code faster or we're able to call code faster wherever I am in the world, it's going to call the closest location, run that JavaScript at the edge in the workers runtime, and then be able to respond back to me quicker than if it was just running in one data center, ideally. So workers is a runtime that you can take advantage of the edge functionality and benefits of the edge in this runtime. And then we also have a few other runtimes that have been around for a little bit like Dino, but maybe haven't really caught on. So maybe a year or two ago, you saw people posting videos about Dino, how it's maybe the Node.js killer, etc. And then it kind of died off. But I think this is the time to see a lot of growth with something like Dino, which is another alternative to Node.js. It's actually created by the founder of Node.js. And I think security and speed and developer experience is meant to be the focus of Dino. And I think that's why it's gonna have a big upside in 2023. In addition to yet another runtime, run are you overwhelmed yet? In Bun. So Bun is another JavaScript runtime that uh, we mentioned earlier is built with Zig, whatever Zig is, a very fast language apparently. And this is another runtime that we can deploy things to the edge as well. Has lots of benefits like native bundler, transpiler, task runner, NPM client, lots of stuff kind of built in, but basically another alternative to Node.js that is advertised as being much faster. So in 2023, we have a lot more options of runtimes to run our JavaScript code than just Node.js. We have Cloudflare workers, we have Dino, we have Bun and others out there. So I think we will see growth in these other options. Now we've already mentioned, I think we will write less JavaScript code this year, but more importantly, we will ship less JavaScript code to the browser. This has become a bigger and bigger trend over the last couple of years with something like the idea of Jamstack where we were trying to pre-render as many pages of our application as possible so that by the time we go to serve them, they are just HTML pages. And that was great, but we realized we were kind of missing some functionality. We've gone through different iterations of what we think best practices are, but I think one concept is here to stay and will continue to grow, which is we will ship less JavaScript to the browser. So a favorite example of mine is Astro. Astro is a framework that I use for my personal website. I'm loving it. You can actually use React, Vue, and Svelte inside of Astro, which is super, super cool. But Astro by default ships no JavaScript to the browser. Something like Eleventy, I think, had a similar goal, and there's other ones as well. But this is one that's been personal for me in the past year. But zero JavaScript by default to the browser, which is a game changer. 
So that's really cool. But let's say you want to ship some JavaScript. Oftentimes we need some sort of JavaScript for functionality in our application. This is where the concept of the islands architecture comes into play, specifically with Astro. So Astro Islands, uh, this is a pattern of web architecture pioneered by Astro. Uh, this is first coined, blah, 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 blah. You can read this. The idea is inside of our application, a lot of our content is static. So we have static HTML, static HTML, static content, and then we have an interactive header and an interactive image carousel that needs JavaScript. Well, with the islands architecture, we can separate these things out where we're only sending JavaScript to support those pieces, those islands, and not JavaScript to the rest of this. So even when we need to add dynamic functionality with JavaScript, we're sending as minimal amount of JavaScript as we possibly can. Now this architecture is actually referenced in a framework called Fresh, which is a framework built for Bun. It's hard to keep up with all these things. But Fresh is a next gen framework focused on speed, reliability, and simplicity. And they also have the concept of the interactive islands architecture where you can ship JavaScript for one specific component, but not for the entire page, which means overall we are going to continue to send less and less JavaScript to the browser. Now, lastly, I think we will continue to see more and more JavaScript frameworks, whether you call them meta frameworks, rendering frameworks, hybrid frameworks, whatever you want to call them, we will see more and more JavaScript frameworks and we will see growth of the existing ones. I know it's already an overwhelming ecosystem. You have React, Angular, Vue, Svelte, and then you have SvelteKit and Next and Nuxt and Remix and all these things, and it can be overwhelming. That's the downside. The benefit though, is that these things are playing off of each other and learning from each other where they're evolving and taking best practices where these frameworks are just getting better and better and better. So going back to the idea of shipping less JavaScript to the browser, Remix is a framework that really focuses on this. It focuses on handling, JavaScript on the server as much as possible. It gets back to the traditional form submissions where you're actually submitting something to a backend instead of handling all the JavaScript on the front end with API calls, etc. So it's more of a Ruby on Rails mentality in a very modern JavaScripty way, which is really cool. But Remix has a focus on shipping less JavaScript to the browser and on handling more JavaScript on the server. So Remix got acquired last year by Shopify. I expect Remix to continue to grow this year. Now, next up is Next.js. You probably already heard of Next.js. It's one of the most popular. It's supported or created by Vercel, so it's got a huge backing behind it. I think Next.js is gonna continue to, to grow and add amazing features, and it's already evolving. So something like React server components shipped with Next.js 13, I think which is in beta right now, and they're getting back to this idea similar to Remix of executing as much code on the server as possible before getting to the browser. This just kind of supports this overall idea of shipping less code to the browser and how these frameworks are gonna to continue to learn from each other and play off of each other and get better and better. Next up is FeltKit, which is one of my very favorite frameworks. This just went 1.0 officially, which is a huge milestone, which gives me the confidence to know that FeltKit is going to continue to grow this year as well. I also mentioned Astro, which is what I use for my personal website. There's also Quick, which is a perfect name for this framework for me. I haven't used it yet, but it talks about frameworks reimagined for the edge, another keyword, another buzzword that we've seen before. And they have this idea of resumability, which is really kind of wild, where you can start basically state on the server, pass over the state to the browser where it's not having to reload everything. It has everything it needs to continue and resume from where it was on the server which is really, really wild. So anyway, I think we're going to continue to see more JavaScript frameworks, and I think they are going to collectively get better and better as they learn from each other. So those are the five JavaScript trends that I think will have a huge impact in 2023. I'm curious, what do you think about these trends and which ones do you think I missed? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.